Hi, this is a quick instructional video on linear and bilinear interpolation. First, we will talk about linear interpolation. Linear interpolation is a method for estimating a new point of a data given existing data. So it is a method of approximation. So here I have replicated a table from the chemical processes lab where these are given values of percent ethyl alcohol concentration at 10 degrees Celsius, and these are the densities. So the chart gives you 10 and 11, but it doesn't give you 10.5. But assuming the, that this is a linear relation at between these po two points, we're able to use linear interpolation to estimate approximately what is 10.5 what the density of ethyl alcohol at 10.5 is. This is a picture of a line. A line is the basic idea behind linear interpolation. Imagine two points on this line. If we are approximating a third point in between these two points, then li what linear interpolation does is assume that the relationship in that very small interval is a linear uh, relationship and this allows us to get a, a rough approximation of a data point. To do linear approximation, we need to know what the slope of the line in question is. And as you might have learned from Algebra 1, the slope m is equal to, in the point slope formula, y minus y naught over x minus x naught. You may also have seen other variations with different subscripts, but the idea is the same. By rearranging this equation to the y equals so that y is on the left side, we can write y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught, which is close to the slope-intercept form that you might have seen in, uh, in your studies. And what this does is, given two points, we're able to calculate the slope, and then we're going to use the second equation to and one of our existing points to project another point on the same line. Uh, the only way that, will, that this equation will be true is if the new point, let's say we'll choose x0, y0 to be our new point, uh, is also on the line that, of, with the same slope. So by using this technique, we're, that's how you do linear interpolation. Here I have a visual representation of what I just described. So the green point would be the new point that we're trying to approximate. And because we know what x value it is, we only have one variable from uh, one unknown from the previous equation. And so what we'll do is first we'll take these two blue points, uh, find the slope of the red line, and then take one blue point, either the, the higher, the left one or the right one, and the green point, and we know we now know the m, the slope, the y of the blue, the x and y of the blue point, and we know the x of the green point. So we have in our previous equation, we only have one unknown, and that's the y that of the green point. So we're able to solve for the new uh, the new y value of the green point. Once again, to reiterate, in case what I said earlier was uh, hard to understand, we want to, it's a two-step process, we want to find the equation of the line using our two existing points, the blue points in our previous slide, uh, m, the slope is our unknown in this first step. Now that we have m, we go to step two, we reuse the same equation and solve for desired x or y value. So we can interpolate um, knowing either x or knowing either y and find the other one, the one that we don't know. So let's go back to our original example, our original chart with uh, 10 and 11 and 10.5. So I'm going to treat our x value as 10 and our y value, y value as 0 0.98393. And likewise for the uh, second point, 11 and 0 0.98267. And I'm going to do the linear interpolation technique on this to show you how it works. Okay, so here I have the same chart again, and explaining in words what I'm doing. Remember, my x value is going to be the percent ethyl alcohol, 
and my y value is going to be the density. So if you can imagine a graph of this, that's what I'm doing. I'm keeping the temperature constant, so it is not part of my equation. And then, so I will use my two, refer two reference points, 10, 0 0.98393, 11, 0 0.98392, uh, six, seven. And first, we're going to find the slope. So if you're following along with me, uh, you can do this calculation yourself, uh, plugging in consistently, keeping in mind that you have to plug in consistently. So if you use 10 and the y coordinate for 10, you got to keep for x and y, you got to keep that con uh, consistent. And x naught and y naught has to be a separate point. So you got one major thing to remember to avoid any mistakes is to keep those uh, variable the coordinates uh, separate and consistent in your equation for calculating slope. And you should find that the slope is negative 0.00126. So you can kind of check yourself. Does this answer make sense? Did the y value f decrease from 10 to 11? And yes, it did. So this answer makes sense. So that's why we have a negative slope. So now we're going to rearrange our previous formula. I've reproduced it here. And because we figure out the slope, we have two points. So we, as I said before, we want to find the density at 10.5%. So we can just, we now use that as one of our, our two points. And we take one of the points from before and then we plug them all back into this equation so that we only have one unknown. So um, you can use either one. I've left the algebra out because I've assumed that you guys can do that. And I found that y is equal to 0 0.9833. So our new point at 10.5% ethyl alcohol, the density can be linearly approximated to be 0 0.9833. And that's it. That's that's what the linear interpolation is. If it doesn't make sense, go back and watch it again and try it out for yourself. It's easiest to see if you can actually work through the numbers here along with me. So before you continue, if you get to this part of the video, uh, don't continue unless you're really comfortable with linear interpolation or at least you know exactly what you're doing. And so we're going to talk about bilinear interpolation now. So bilinear interpolation might sound really complex and it is generally used when there are more than two variables. So what you're going to have to end up doing for bilinear interpolation is hold one variable constant and you're going to be interpolating linearly multiple times to specifically, well, three times for three variables to find an approximated value. So let's take a look at an example. But before we continue, make sure make sure you understand linear interpolation. So bring back the chart from before. As you can see, this is now an extended version as the one you can see on your chemical processes lab. And previously, we only had the temperature, uh, one column of the temperature. But now when, when we have multiple columns of the temperature, you see how we've introduced a new variable. So bilinear interpolation, how it's going to work is, let's say I wanted to know, approximate the value of the density at 10.5% ethyl alcohol and at 12 degrees Celsius. Now, if you look at your chart, 12, both 12 degrees Celsius and 10.5% ethyl alcohol are both not on your um, chart. So how can we get this? Well, we're going to linearly interpolate, so you should be experts at that by now, uh, the values at 10.5 for 10 degrees and the values at 10.5 for 15 degrees and then and then that gives us two points and then we're going to linearly interpolate between those two points to find the middle point. You can also do it the other way where you hold um, the percent ethyl alcohol constant and then you're going to use uh, the different temperatures as your x values. So keep in mind we always want density to be our y value here because that's the values we're working with. So I'm going to do it both ways to show that you do indeed get the same value either way. So it doesn't matter which way you do, you should be getting the same value. Um, so let's take a look. So if you try to do it, like uh, do the linear interpolation like I talked about in the last slide, you should have gotten these values. 
Uh, we already did the first, the most left one, 10.5 and 10 degrees Celsius. So we know that's the density. But I got these values for uh, for the other cases. Um, so the trick is to, it's especially for the interpolating with percent alcohol constant, is that you have to make sure you keep your x's and y's correct. So I ran into that problem when I was first doing the calculation where I forgot to keep change my x to the 10 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius. But if you didn't get these values, go back and check your work. Make sure, Go back and make sure you know how to do linear interpolation. But these are the values you should have gotten. So from here, as I said before, we want to linearly interpolate a third time to get the middle value, which is which I have wrote bi here, standing for bilinear, or sorry, bl, standing for bilinear interpolation. So we want to in linearly interpolate either once again either keeping percent ethyl alcohol constant or the temperature constant, and try this out for yourself before you go to the next slide and see if you get the same value. Uh, you definitely should. So. All right. Okay, so you should have gotten, as I've shown here in blue, 0 0.98293. And when I in linearly interpolated, I did both both ways. I kept percent ethyl alcohol constant and temperature constant, and got the same value. So double check your work if you're not getting the same value, and also make sure you're linearly interpolating correctly. And pretty much that's it. That's that's all there is to bilinear interpolation. Once you understand linear interpolation, it's just doing it multiple times to get the right value. So in conclusion, make sure you understood how linear interpolation works and how it applies to multiple variable systems, which means when you need to bilinearly interpolate. I'm sure there's also trilinearly interpolate, but you won't have to go that uh, to that level of complexity. But once you understand linear interpolation, it's very easy to extend it to bilinear interpolation. Just keep your variables consistent and make sure you're using the right values. If you don't understand the slope intercept um, and the point slope formulas that I introduced way earlier in this uh, presentation, you should go back and restudy uh, your algebra, algebra concepts. Uh, other than that, good luck on your lab.